I'm going to start with with a, another question, and and it is, um, are we, are we, as a people, as a nation, Israel, are we rescuable? Are we rescuable? So Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacha. As we approach the memorial of being passed over for destruction, Pesach. Let's try to discern if we're rescuable or if we still have work to do. No scriptural work out this Shabbat. I'm going to stay right in the book of Shemot, Exodus, um, and I'm going to go kind of quick. We, we, we've been studying this, this book, especially up to Pesach um, for the past few weeks. So I'm not going to go a lot into detail. I'm just going to hit some points. And we're going to start at chapter four. Shemot or Exodus chapter four and starting at verse 29. And just a little bit of background while you get there. You know, we, we already know that that uh, Israel was in Mitzrayim uh, kind of living it up down in Goshen until um, another uh, Pharaoh that, that didn't know Yosef. He didn't know uh, Israel that has immensely multiplied in his in his land, the new pharaoh, and so he he got afraid. He started oppressing them, started oppressing them, and they kind of um, not kind of, but they they felt the pressure. You know, they 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 uh, they recognized their need for salvation, and so we get to chapter four here, uh, verse twenty nine, and it reads. Up to this point, in verse 29, it reads, And Moshe and Aharon went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel, all the elders of the children of Israel, and the people, uh, and Aaron, and Aaron, Aharon spoke all the words which Yah had spoken unto Moshe and did signs in the sight of the people. I remember, y'all know the story where I'm just going to keep going. Um, verse uh, 31. And the people believed. The people believed. And when they heard that Yah had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshiped. And Moray kind of went into it in, in this cultural study. You know, for so long, they had been immersed into this Egyptian culture. They kind of forgot their Elohim. They forgot their Elohim. And then when Aharon and Moshe, specifically Aharon, started reminding them of who their Elohim is, when they recognized the need for salvation, the need to be rescued. The point being, once they... <laughs> They were in a hard spot and they needed rescue. They had to be reminded. They, 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 they needed to be reminded of who their real power is, who their real power is. And that's when they cried out to the most high. After Aharon had kind of brought back to their remembrance the words that, that, that the most high instructed Moses to tell the people. And they believed. Now let's turn over to chapter five. Like I said, I'm going to go kind of quick. We know the story, and if you don't, you got to go back and read it. Let's turn over to chapter five, and we're going to start at verse 20. Chapter five and verse 20. And it reads, and they met Moshe, and they came forth from Pharaoh as they came forth from, from Pharaoh. And they said, this is the children of Israel or the elders of, of, of the children of Israel. They met Moshe and Aaron as they were coming from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, Yah look upon you and judge because ye have made our savior to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. And Moshe returned unto Yah and said, Master, Adonai, 
Wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. This, this Pharaoh, after Moses and Aaron went to speak to him and the elders, this Pharaoh amped up the rigors, the oppression on Israel. And so the people are like, what did you do, man? What, 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 what did you say to make them hate our God? That's wise. That's a wise question to ask, you know? He said, what did you do? You made the most high hated in the eyes of our oppressor. You have given them an excuse to kill us. Let the most high's judgment be on you, not us. Let the most high's judgment be on you. And then Moshe, we see wisely approach the most high and he asks, what Moshe is asking the most high, uh, uh, what is he doing wrong? Moshe, what am I doing wrong? Is there something I missed in your instruction to me? What is the lesson that I'm supposed to learn here? It seems that what I did brought more problems onto your people. I just want you to kind of catch that mind frame right there, that, 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 that state of thought. Wise, wise counsel. Hey, I did what you said. I don't understand. Did I, did I miss something? Did I miss something in your instruction? Is there a lesson you want me to learn from this? So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's turn over to chapter six. Chapter six, and we're going to read from verses one through eight. Chapter six, verses one through eight. Then Yah said unto Moshe, now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. Verse 2, and Elohim spake unto Moshe and said unto him, I am Yahuwah, I am Yahweh, I am Yahuwah, I am Yah. And I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of Elohim Almighty, Elohim Al Shaddai. But by my name, Yahweh, Yahuwah, was I not known to them? That's important to remember. Verse four, I'm going to go quick though. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan and the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am Yahuwah, I am Yahweh, I am Yah. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Listen to all this. Possessive, I, 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 it's important. And I will rid you of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with the great judgment. And I will take you to me for people and I will bring you and I will be to you an Elohim. And ye shall know that I am Yah, your Elohim, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into, I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which 
I did swear to give to Abraham, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov. And I will give it you for an heritage. I am Yahweh. I am Yahuwah. I am Yah. So what is, what's going on here? This is the most high. Listen to what he said to, to Moses when Moses went to say, what's going on? I'm missing something. Did I, did I misunderstand the instruction? Am I doing something wrong? And this is the most high's response to Moshe. He's letting Moshe know this is who I am. Your forefathers knew me under a different character. You, Moshe, just continue to be obedient and trust that I got this. <laughs> you go and let my people know that I got this. Tell them to be patient because I'm about to show them who I am. The side of me that their forefathers never knew. Tell them what I have in store for them. Give them hope. I'm gonna take them away from who they thought were gods to them. I'm going to show them my power over these false gods, these idols. And I'm going to be their one and only power, their one and only God. Just give them hope, Moshe. Just keep doing what I tell you to do. This is the most High showing them that he is the almighty, worthy to be praised. And as they recognize how he is humbling the most powerful kingdom and their gods that's in the world at that time, he's also seeing how humble his people will be. Will they recognize him as their only rescuer? Not Pharaoh, not even Moshe. And most importantly, not of their own doing. Now let's go to chapter 12 and I'll close I'll close with that chapter chapter 12 I'm going to start and we're going to read verses 13 uh no we're going to read verses 12 and 13 so let's go to chapter 12 we're going to read verses 12 and 13 Exodus chapter 12 verse 12 and it reads, for I will pass through the land of Mitzrayim this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, both man and beast, and against all the mighty ones of Egypt, of Mitzrayim. I will execute judgment, and I am Yah. Verse 13, and the blood shall be to you for a token the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Mitzrayim. Token of being rescuable. After all that you witnessed, this is the most high. After all that you witnessed of my majesty in the earth, my sovereignty, my almighty power, how I brought down the most powerful kingdom and their gods, I've shown you my awesome capability to be your only Elohim, your only power. I'm sh I've shown that to you. Now, you know, we, we skipped a lot, but the way he humbled Egypt, the plagues, all those plagues and then taking the firstborn of the males. He said, I've shown you my awesome capability to be your only power. This is what you have to do to show me that you are deliverable, that you are rescuable. Follow these instructions to the letter. And we, we went through that uh, uh, last night and we went through that the Shabbat before what they had to do to prepare for the Passover. 
He says, follow these instructions to the letter. I will break the shackles and bring you to a place where you can think clearly and be able to decide to be my people and serve me only. And we know they followed the instructions to the letter on Pesach. They were delivered. They, they left out that night in haste. They presented the token the most high needed to see. He broke the shackles of the bondage and led them to the wilderness, away from what they were familiar with, away from the idols and the customs and the traditions that had them cut off from the most high. This brings me to the warning. In the wilderness, in unfamiliar territory, in deep, deep water, some lost their focus. Some lost sight of salvation. You know, all the originals that came out, all the original uh, Israelites that came out perished except Joshua and Caleb. They were ultimately not rescuable. All the murmuring, all the complaining, all the rebellion against, and not really Moshe, they were rebelling against the Most High. Moshe was just delivering the message, the instructions to them. Breaking the shackles of bondage, coming into the knowledge of the truth is not salvation. It's not salvation alone. That's only the beginning. There's a wilderness part that has to be endured. Humility, obedience, patience, and endurance with the hope, with the faith, with seeing the salvation, seeing rest. Those are the tokens of rescuability, if that's a word. Those are the tokens just like the blood on the, on the doorpost and following those instructions to the letter. Those are the tokens the Most High is looking for to be rescuable. Closing. This is the picture I see in the wilderness. When I meditate on the scriptures and, 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 and think about the whole volume of the book, this is, this is the picture I see in the wilderness. One third of the most highest people were just crowd followers in the wilderness. They just followed the crowd. Hey, wherever the crowd's going, I'm going. They perished in the wilderness, not rescuable. One third lost sight of their salvation. They knew where they were going. They started out with hope. They started out with seeing their salvation, but somewhere along the way, they lost sight of their salvation. The journey was not worth the effort anymore. They perished, not rescuable. And then one third kept their focus on salvation and humbly, like shepherds, follow wherever the shepherd led them, understanding that wherever the most high leads, that's exactly where they want to be. That one third is rescuable. Mishpaka, which one third are you going to be in? Which one third are you going to be in in this wilderness? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. All praise and esteem to the Most High. Uh, great two minute, uh, 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 Zakane, a great warning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. At this time, Mr. Bakar, I'm going to go ahead and send up Tefla. Uh, I'm going to do things a little bit different. Uh, the Ruach that's already in the room, I'm going to ride that, you know, because uh, he asked us a question Are we rescuable? You know, uh, where are we going to be? You know, so I just want to go ahead and continue to ride right where Zakane already has us high in the Ruach. So I would say, Brukata Yahuwah, Malach HaOlam. Bless you, Yahuwah, our Elohim, King of the universe. Father, we say, Toto Rabbah for this Shabbat, Toto Rabbah for this Mishpachah, Toto Rabbah for your grace and your mercy upon us. 
Uh, but we just ask of you, please forgive us for our sins, transgressions, and iniquities. Forgive our forefathers back to Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, and that we forgive Adam, Wachua, Adam, and Eve. Father, we just thank you that you have given us an opportunity to be able to shema, to hear, to perceive, and to understand your Torah, and that we are trying to obey your Torah. Father, we ask you to continue to purge our heart from any false ways of worship, false doctrine. Purge us from ourself, Abba. Purge us from any wicked seeds or bad vices that Shaitan has planted within us, Abba. And we just ask you to purge us that we may be good ground. Father, we just ask in your Kodash name, if you will continue to watch over our family members who have not yet embraced this truth, but that we will be a light unto them by the way we walk this truth, not by the way we talk the truth, but by the way we walk the truth. That they see the love of you dwelling within us, that they see the compassion of you dwelling within us, that they see the righteousness of you dwelling within us, that we can be a light to lead many unto you. Father, we just ask if you will continue to be merciful upon us as we are still trying to get things right. Father, we ask if you will pour out your ruach upon us to give us the understanding of those things which we do not understand. And that while we do not understand, Father, that we will remain steadfast in that which we do understand, that we will not waver to and fro with every wind of doctrine, that we will stay steadfast on that which we know to be true, that we will walk according to your Torah, your mitzvah, that we will not turn to the left nor to the right, but that we will walk the straight and narrow path, which leads unto righteousness. Father, we ask if you will give us the desire, the desire and the willingness to please you, the desire to truly obey and to reference your word, that we will not listen to any other voice and that we will not be swayed away by the enemy or any of the enemy's minions, that we will stay steadfast in you, O oh Yah. I will ask if you will help us in these trying times and these days that we're living in, when there are many distractions and things that are thrown in the way, and there are many false doctrines and strange doctrines. There are many false teachers and false prophets. There are family members who really do not have your ruach that really seek our hurt. Father, we just ask you to place a hedge of protection around us and you shamar, you guard and you protect us, you keep us, you hedge us about that we may be safe. Father, I ask you to put a guard over our mind as you did King Dawid. I ask you to put a guard over our mouth that we would not think the wrong thing that we would not hold the wrong things in our remembrance, that we would not speak the wrong thing and speak words of damnation into ourselves, but that we would speak loves of shalom, that we would speak words of peace, that we would speak words of ahab, that we would speak words of love, that we would speak words of refah, or we would speak words of healing. Father, that we would speak words, Abba, that would lead many unto you. Father, we just thank you for the season that we're coming up on. We thank you that you've given us acknowledgement of your feast days, your more deen, your appointed times, we thank you that you've given us an understanding of the importance of keeping your commandments, your moedim, and all the writings that are there in your Torah. And we just thank you, Abba, that you open our eyes to the truth. But we ask if we do not do it from a pride for Ruach, but if we do it of a Ruach of humility. And Father, I pray today that we are those who will be rescuable, that we'll be those that are savable, if that's even a word, that we'll be those that you're looking upon, that you're saying that you are preparing a place for us that we may dwell with you, that when your new kingdom comes and hits the earth, we may be able to walk therein and we'll be there with the ambassadors that rule. And that when you're set apart kingdom, your spiritual kingdom, Father, your place of Shemayim, that we are able to be there with you, Abba. We praise you, we honor, and we esteem your name. Blessed to you, Yahuwah. Blessed is your name, Yahuwah. And blessed is he who comes to your name, Yahuwah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, wa amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, Mishpachai, I'm going to jump right in. I can't, Yaquab and got the Ruach flowing. And since he asking a question, you know, I told y'all last night, I was going to have a question to ask today. Um, and so he asked, are we rescuable? Are we rescuable? Are we ones that the Most High will find worthy of salvation? And the question that I want to add to that, which I didn't have originally for last night, but I just want to build my question to come along with his is, and if we're not, why not? It's just a start. So today I'm going to be going into uh, the Brit Kadasha mostly today. As I can, Yaquab said, I'm not going to be for, before you long. I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of Torah today because we always cover Torah in, in, in great detail, all praise, honor, esteem to the Most High. But I just want us to get into some practical application or some thought, I should say. Um, so first of all, Kanaka, if you would, 
Turn for me to the book of uh, Hosea, chapter 10, Kanakia. Let's start with Hosea, chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10, and I want you to start with verse 12. Hosea, Hosea 10 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek Yah till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Hallelujah. So let's stop it for a moment. So one of the things I'm going to be touching on today is parables. I'm going to touch on a few parables today. Um, and when you look up the word parable, it comes from the Greek word parable or parabolos, which is to throw alongside. It's something that gives a comparison. Um, it's, it's something that puts you, it, it gives you a visual that you should be able to understand if you understand what's being spoken of. So um, when we get to the Brick Kadashah, you're going to see that the Most High uses a lot of agriculture or farming or planting terms speaking to Israel. He uses a lot of agriculture or planting or farming terms when dealing with Israel. So if we want to understand what's being said, then we need to understand these parables. And in order to understand a parable, we have to even understand the, the base of what's being said itself. So what is sowing? In the natural sense, when you sow something, what are you doing? Okay. So what you say, sis? You said you're planting. So you said you're planting some. I got one in the room said you're planting some. So when you sow, you're planting. Anyone else? What is sowing? Nobody don't I say you're What'd you say? Like if you're sewing, like putting two fabrics together, you're sewing two fabrics together. Okay, not in this regard. Uh, the sew, not putting the two fabrics together, but this is actual going to be the one in reference to, as this is saying, you're planting something. Um, so when you sew, um, it's to disperse or to, uh, to scatter. So whenever you're planting seed, so that's why in order to understand these parables, we need to understand when a person is sowing something, they're throwing seeds out onto the ground or into the ground. Okay, Zakane, what do you have? It could be something that you are actually giving with hopes of expectation of something taking place there afterwards. So it could be something that you're giving with hopes of getting something with, with what you've given out thereafter. So in the natural sense, when you are actually, in the natural sense of the word so, what are you doing? You're dispersing or you're throwing out seed with the hope of what? Retrieving. A return. Something. A return. Yes. So what Zakane did was he gave the understanding of what a parable does. He put it in the aspect of when you're giving something out, you're giving something for the, uh, the hopes of a return. So that's the reason why I said it's important for us to understand the terms that the Most High use in reference to Israel. Um, so when we're sowing, we're planting something. We're dispersing some form of seed. Brother Michael, what do you have? Shalom. I was thinking about as in um, a deed, a behavior, doing something. As in a deed or a behavior. Okay, so that's that's good, but we're not to that point yet. I'm simply okay. just asking, but I get what you're saying. That I'm trying to give an example of what a parable actually does. But first of all, we need to understand what sowing is, right? So sowing is to actually plant something. So now going to what you and I came with now saying, what are our deeds? What are we putting out? So it says, sow to yourselves righteousness. So now it goes to what you're saying, Brother Michael. Sow to yourselves righteousness. But we have to first understand that sowing means what? Plant something. So sow to yourselves righteousness. Reap. What is reaping? Collecting it back. So now Gather. that's the harvest. There's a harvest. That's collecting it back. So going into what uh, Zakane was saying, you're giving something out with the hopes of getting something in return. So now it's saying, so a plant to yourself righteousness 
so that you can reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. So if we want to receive mercy, we got to be planning some righteousness to even receive mercy. But in order for us to have a return or a harvest, we have to do what? Break up fallow ground. What is fallow ground? Huh? Unseatable soil. Unseatable soil, uncultivated, tough ground. Remember this one, stony ground uncultivated, has not been prepared to receive seed. A ground is uncultivated, a ground that is not able to receive seed. So if you are throwing your seed out and you're sowing someplace where the ground has not been broken up, what are you gonna get in return? Nothing. So break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek Yahuwah till he come and rain righteousness upon you. It says here, but you have plowed wickedness. So going back to what Adon Michael was saying about, he's looking at it as a deed. So now in actuality, this parable here, or these words that the prophet is speaking is something that we need to look at. First, we have to understand sowing actual seed, reaping an actual harvest, now we can understand this is now telling us to sow in certain type actions, behaviors. The keeping of the commandments of the Torah of the Most High, we need to be doing those things. Those are the seeds we need to be cultivating. We need to be breaking up our hearts and our grounds. We're on the season of unleavened coming up. We need to be doing what? Purging ourselves of anything that has us puffed up so that we can actually receive righteousness. We can receive good seed. And it's very hard to receive good seed in a ground that's already full of sin. It's very hard to put righteousness in a body, in a mind, in a ground that's already full of sin and wickedness. So we must do a purging or a cleansing, which is doing what? Break it up the fallow ground. We must break up what we already think that we know. Get all the mess out of us so that we can receive, because it said you have plowed wickedness. So even when you were plowing and trying to get your field together, how are you plowing your field? You plowed your field with wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. So you were planting and plowing and you were planting sin, so therefore you reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because thou didst trust in the way in the multitude of mighty men. So do we have a two minute warning where Zakain said that the most high wanted them to reference him to know it is he who saved them. Not that they will reference the power of Pharaoh, not that they will even reference Moses, but they will reference the most high. The most high gave Moses the ability to go and bring them out. But the most high's name and the most high's name alone was the only name to be heard. So we should not put our trust in mighty men and what the world says and following the multitude for lies because yeah, we've been plowing and breaking up I don't want to tell y'all, for real, for real, look at it. Our people's heart have been plowed up. They beat the word of Yah out of us and planted what? The fruit of lies of Shaitan. You are of your father, the devil, and that's been by design. So when you look at things from a Hebraic culture perspective, there is a positive and a negative to everything. So you can say covet. You have a commandment that says, Thou shalt not covet, right? Mm -hmm. Now I have a question for you. Shall you covet? Okay. Thou shalt not covet. Now I'm going to ask you, shall you covet? Yes. Gain. Cover the righteous thing. Covet Torah. Okay, 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 okay. We, we got to go to that. They weren't scared. That they was, they was hesitant for a little while. They was hesitant for a little while. Then y'all started coming with it. So thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, wife, man, servant, maid, servant, nor anything that is thy neighbor's, but you shall covet the word of Yah. But this society has us coveting transgender and wanting to be this, want other people's stuff. Want what Shatan wants us to have. We should not covet those things. Those are the lies that have been placed in us, but our ground has been broken up by telling us the laws are done away with. 
So they first did what? They broke up our mind and they took the understanding of the creator away from us and gave us a whole nother culture that is not the culture of Yah. And so now, as I said earlier, the reason why some people cannot be righteous, because how can you plant righteousness in an unrighteous field already? You have to break up what you've learned, break up your ground so that you can now receive the good seed that have been taken away from us. Now let's jump to where we're going for the day. Let's jump to the book of, let me see which order I want to do the same. Let's jump to the book of Mark first, Kadakia. The book of Mark chapter four. Because I wanted to go here for a reason in reference to, we have to understand how Yah was speaking to his people and how Mashiach would even speak and it would use parables. So we're gonna to go to the book of Mark chapter four. Start with verse one. And he began again to teach by the seaside and there was gathered unto him a great multitude so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. Hearken, behold, there went out a sword to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had not root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. And he said unto them, he that have ears to hear, let him hear. Oh, here for a second. So one thing that I want us to understand is he began to teach and he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. So I want you to just highlight, he's teaching. He's teaching the word, but he's also speaking to them by way of parables. So if we do not understand the parable, we will not be able to understand the message that's being spoken. So it says, Shema or hearken, Behold, there went out a sword to sow. He sowed some by the wayside, some on stony ground, some on thorny ground, and some on good ground. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the answers that we normally would get for some of these. So when I normally would ask this question, who are those by the wayside? I'm not literally asking for you to answer now. I'm going to answer with some of the answers that we would normally get. Most people would think those by the wayside are people who, as Zakane was saying, just going along with the crowd, they're following the multitude. We see all these people, we just kind of follow along, we watch and we see what's going on. But I don't really want to be a part of that. I'm just kind of being nosy, kind of seeing what's happening. I'm standing by, but I'm not really involved. Some would say those by the wayside are those that don't want the truth. They want to receive the truth. They're just out here, but they don't want the truth. And that used to be some of my thought process until the most high revealed to me what I've seen in these parables. So I said, it's going to be those by the wayside and those by the wayside, these birds came through and they, the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. So you're just throwing your seed. As we said earlier, when you sow, you're spreading, you're dispersing seed. You're throwing it out. But it says here, he began to teach. So he's not throwing seed. He's throwing the word. He's throwing precepts and commandments. He's throwing behaviors. As the Don Michael was saying. I'm, I'm throwing conducts out of how you're supposed to be as a child of Elohim. These are the things that I'm sprinkling out among the people. But now going back just to the sower, you must first understand that a sower disperses seed onto the ground. And there are different types of ground. 
And what this is letting us know is that the different type ground produces fruit differently or not at all. So wayside, the birds come through and they eat the seeds. Stony ground, because there's not enough earth there and it was not enough ground and the seed wasn't planted with enough soil because it was stony, as Ima Shoshana said, it's not, the ground is not good to plant in. It can't really yield fruit. Not that it necessarily can't, but it can't. Meaning it did yield some, but it died before you could even harvest it. Why? Because there was not enough ground, there was not enough dirt or soil to bury the seed down far enough that when the sun is up and it's scorching the plant that's already to the top, it didn't have time for rain to come and get down to the root to keep it alive because it couldn't take root. So therefore, as soon as the sun rise, it would burn it because it sprouted up too soon and it didn't go through the process. Torah, as Maury Haney, I would tell you, is a heart transplant. It's a heart surgery. There is a process of learning Torah. There's some people that get this thing and they try to run a little too fast and then they end up running away from it because it's things they don't understand about it and they sprout it up a little too soon because it didn't have root. When you plant your food into the ground, there's a process. The process is before planting the seed, break up the ground. So remember I said last night, Mr. Picard, I want you all to do self-examination last night and look into yourself, see what you see within yourself. The reason for that is you are the ground. You are the ground, but you have to break up and you have to till, you have to cultivate yourself to have your heart ready to receive the word of the most high. Do y'all see how many people want to reject the Sabbath and say, you don't have to do that now? That was in the Old Testament. How is that thought form to say you don't have to do that now? It's in the Old Testament. But when it's first written, it said, this is a perpetual covenant forever, an everlasting covenant. You can't do away with what the Most High has established from the beginning in Bereshit. Say he rested on the seventh day. But mighty men have told us that you don't have to keep it anymore because the laws are done away with. What has happened? They planted some other type seed alongside the most high seed. And then they took away the most high seed. And now people cannot receive the word of the most high. Why is that? They did not break up the ground. They did not come ready to receive. They came for what they wanted. We coming for the most high, we have to come and we have to receive the seed of his word that he's given us. And the reason why we reject his word is based upon what type of ground we are. Verse 10, Kadakia. So again, before I move forward, he said, but those that have ears to hear, let them hear. So right now, this could still possibly not make much sense other than I'm telling y'all how to garden, which we need to be doing also. You need to be preparing some food supply, some food source. So I hope you understand, you got to break up that ground. You got to get them roots and them rocks and all this stuff from under there. So your seed can go down and go down far enough so that they can be rooted and they can bud with an increase for a reaping or a harvest. What does that have to do with our spirituality, Maurice Samak? Read on, Kadak, y'all. And when he was alone, they were, they were about him with the 12 asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of Elohim. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Ho, ho, ho. What do y'all get out of that verse? So remember he said, he that have ears to hear, let him hear. Now his disciples are asking him, the 12 are asking him privately. Why are you speaking to them in parables and what do we to understand from this? And he just responds to them. But I want you to tell me, I'll take about the first three comments. What are you getting from this thus far? Zakane Yaqua? Uh, Shalom, Todah Moray. Um, 
uh, could it be those that are on the that are that are on the on the on the side <laughs> when the seed is being planted? Those that are on the outside, you know, they 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 they're not they're not really committed. They're just kind of like standing around watching. So that that's what I get out of that. Okay, Zakan Yaku, I haven't spoken. I'll speak in just a moment. Zakan Eliyahu. This is only for kingdom-minded people. Everybody only, else needn't apply. It's only for kingdom-minded people. Everybody else needs not to know about it, huh? So y'all see why I jumped right in today? I had to jump right in. Because Zakan Yaquab in his closing was saying he gave his visual of the wilderness. This is what I see. There's some people out there just following along, going with the multitude that wasn't really about it. It wasn't kingdom-minded. They were just there. I'm just Israel. I, we just came out, we just followed along, but we ain't trying to live right. And that's the reason why, as Zakane said about being kingdom minded, that is the reason why Caleb and Yehoshua, Yahusha, or Joshua are the ones that went in with the younger generation into the promised land because it was kingdom minded. Those two young ox was dedicated to the Most High. Those two young ox walked with Moshe and the elders that was trying to bring forth that righteousness while others was just there doing the exact same thing that a lot of our brothers and sisters do today, bragging on the fact that we Israelites. I'm an Israelite. I'm God's chosen people. You better be Israel according to the heart. You better desire to be righteous. You better love your wife. You better love your husband. You better respect your elders. You best honor your father and your mother. You best not commit adultery. You best not be stealing. You should not have hatred for a brother in your heart. You should repent. You should forgive. If you're doing none of those things, what's the reward in being an Israelite? As we said before, the Most High always shows us in his word what stuff looks like. Our salvation can be seen and our destruction or our curses can be seen. As more had just said, by our actions. By our actions. So Zakan Yaakov had already said earlier in the two minute, there are those that are just going with the flow, but their hearts ain't in this thing. So what Mashiach said to them is, he would is to hear, let him hear. And when they taught him privately, he told them this. It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of Elohim, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. So everybody out here hear what Mashiach is saying. But everybody out here does not understand what's being said. Verse 12, can I care? That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. So that verse, as people will say, that part, what are y'all getting out of that part? Panaka, I jumped to Matthew 13, um, 13, and give me verse 14 and 15 to assist with that one, because I want to bring it just a little bit. I want to bring that thought together. Um, Matthew 13, uh, let me see. Is it 14 or 15? I won't. Give me one moment. All right. Give me Matthew 13, 14, and 15 to go along with that thought while people meditate. Okay, we already got some hands up. We got some hands up. Hold on one second. Can I, let's, let, let's go for what the two hands we already have thus far. Uh, by Francis, what are you getting? Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Um, so the part where it says lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And it goes into what you were saying previously that, you know, once you are aware of, um, of things that you're doing, if you continue in that way before you're ready, then you're responsible for those, for those actions. But um, if there's parables right now, and then later on down the road, you, um, then understand and are converted, then at that point, everything that you did out of ignorance is forgiven, I believe. You sort of own it, 
But sis, I'm going to tell you, that's the reason why we study this word. So that is good what you said. That is good understanding. That if you understand it, then you would do it. So your own point on that part. But I want us to see something else that jumped out of me like a ton of bricks when the most high revealed it to me. But that, that's still told what you said, my sister. That's still told. Zakane Eliyahu. I believe what it's saying is that Yah only wants those in the kingdom that want to be in his kingdom. And they will demonstrate that uh, desire by adhering to what it is that he's asked of us. Okay, so Yah only wants those that are kingdom minded that desires to be in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Zakane Yaquab. And I'll move forward after Zakane Yaquab. I think um, <clears throat> that what it's saying is um, those that, that hear it, and and they will have the plan sort of like i don't want to give them a, re, a, a a way in at the last minute you know i, I don't want to give them a way in i don't want to give them the key because they're not ready for it so to speak i don't want to give them a key or way in at the last minute i like that zakane yaquan i like that so let's get a little assistance from Mat matiyahu and so those were great answers hallelujah hallelujah Matthews 13, can I, what did I call off for you to read? Uh, 14 and 15, I believe it was. Yeah, give me uh, Matthews 13, 14 and 15. Y'all hold Mark, because we're going right back to Mark. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear and not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart and be converted, and I should heal them. So we see here, so for people that want to tell us that the Old Testament is done away with, what do we see the Mashiach is quoting from? So he asked, he said, those that have ears to hear, let them hear. Those that have eyes to see, let them see. But now, because some people don't understand, he's saying, it is now being fulfilled what's written in the book of Isaiah. In the scroll of Isaiah, what's being full, fulfilled now is there are those that they see with their eyes, but they see not. There are those who ears are gross and they're so filled up, they're dull of hearing. They hear, but they can't hear. They can't understand. They can't make this word out because they choose to really be like this. There's no understanding in them. But now the part that I want to add here is the end part. It says, they should see with their eyes. I'm going to read 15 all over again. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. So they purposely have closed their eyes, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand. So remember in the cultural portion today, y'all see where it's tying in? The Shema means to hear, perceive, understand, and obey. You need to understand what it is you're hearing, because if you do not understand what you're hearing, it is profitless. It is only profitable if you understand it. That's the reason why we Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Akkad, when he brought us out of Egypt from serving all those false gods, many gods, he said, Israel, I'm your God and I am one. Understand that, obey this, perceive. Lose them traditions and customs of all these many other gods. Serve me and me alone. Wa'ahabata et Yahweh Eloheka. And you shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, all your being. Don't love anyone else. We got to understand that. But these traditions that they've taught us today has us loving other gods and not Elohim. They've shut their eyes on the word of Yah as prophesied in the book of Isaiah, but they teach us after they broke our ground up to tell us the Old Testament is done away with, so we can't even understand what Mashiach even talking about. But not just what he's talking about. I want you to really hear what he's saying in what he's talking about. Their ears, uh, they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart. So once they understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Zakan Yaakov said, sounds like to him, he don't want to give them a key at the last minute. Mishpachah, we've been taught God is love and God loves everybody. If you really know Mashiach, and again, not trying to offend anybody that's new, but not Jesus as they taught in the church in that false way of 
serving a false one, if you really love Mashiach, you need to know Mashiach to know who you really love him. Mashiach says who he was sent to. He said, I'm sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm sent to those who the Most High has given me. When you read the book of John and Yahuganah, he said, I'm sent to those who the Father has given me, and the Father will not take them from my hands. I say for them, now sanctify yourself, because he's going to send us out to the world for those who are desiring to seek the Creator, those who are kingdom minded. But anybody that's not kingdom minded, he spoke parables to. Y'all just following along. Y'all just waiting for the blessing, but y'all heart ain't kingdom minded. And if y'all understood that tomorrow was the last day on earth, Every last one of y'all are short for Shabbat service. But because no man knows the time or the hour, and we have not told anyone, y'all will continue to live reckless. And the 30 plus that's online regularly on Shabbat, the hundreds that are scattered in separate homes or the thousands that are scattered in their homes on Shabbat, the many other assemblies that are gathered on Shabbat, that have a total of 30 to 50 members at best a lot of times, when around you in your community is thousands and thousands and thousands of people just doing whatever they want to do. The Most High do not want you to be able to say salvation is tomorrow because everybody will show up. What the Messiah is saying here is, if they understood what I'm saying to y'all who desire to be in the kingdom, you who are kingdom minded, you who are putting in the work, you that have returned to Torah, you that have humbled yourself like King Josiah, when Josiah said, oh my goodness, our fathers inherited lies. That's why we going through all this? Oh my goodness, we need to keep Pesach. We need to keep Passover. We're going to get all this leavening out of the nation. Go kill them wicked priests. Tear down every grove. And then he got covert and go kill anybody that's around here pretending that they serve the most high, but they still serve him by our, we killing all that. We getting all this living up out of here. And when y'all said, we got to know our father. And when y'all said to the prophetess, take this word, the prophetess told the, the priest to go back to that young man, to that young king, go back and tell him, I seen the tenderness and the humbleness of his heart. And because he rent his clothes and he now understands and he with his heart want to serve me, he's going to go to his grave in Shalom to rest with his fathers. But as for everybody else, yeah, I didn't say it proud. I didn't say everybody else. I didn't say it that way. Everybody else, they're going to get this work because I'm fed up with these people that does not consider me, have not considered me, and they don't consider me with their heart. But if they knew salvation was tomorrow, they come running for that salvation. But I want you to serve me because you want to, because you love me. So you who have been doing what you're supposed to do, it is to you who are giving the understanding of the kingdom of Shemayim. Those that have been listening, those that have been serving willingly, been changing, been breaking up the ground and receiving the word of Elohim, not just to get to the kingdom of heaven, but because you understand who your father is, you understand what his word is, and you want to return to the presence of your father and love him because he first loved you. So I'm going to tell y'all that loving Mashiach, y'all know we covered last week also, it said those of old times fell up under the feet of, Mo, uh, of Moses. <laughs> it said how much soul punishment you think will befall being under the foot of the son of man when he come through to do judgment. He not coming back through for a whole bunch of people that ain't ready, that didn't want to get ready when he already gave prophets, prophetess, Kohanim, a priest, teaching Torah, and people still saying the laws is done away with and we ain't got to do none of that. So when we speak in a parable, Mishpachah, and I'm going to give you all a little parable real quick. I'm going to give you all a little parable as I gave my Yaladim. If we ever, Mishpaka, and y'all listen to this one right now, <laughs> if we ever go someplace to fellowship, or we someplace in public because we say, hey, after Shabbat, let's go out to eat together, and we're someplace, if y'all hear me start saying some stuff like, 
There's a whole lot of leavened bread in here. We need to be unleavened. When y'all see me get up to go to the bathroom, and y'all like, it's taking Samak a very long time to come in from the bathroom, y'all should understand that what Samak was saying is, we amongst a bunch of sinners, we need to get out of here. It's too much leaven up in here. It's leavened bread everywhere up in here. We in the season, Mishpachah, of unleavened bread. Now don't get up everybody at one time, but one at a time, slide out, and let's load the vehicles up, and let's get up out of here. That's how Mashiach was talking to his Talmudim, to those who really were serving Yah with a pure heart. He spoke in parables because he didn't want just sinners that are willfully sinning to even understand what was being said. But the world commonly believes today that what? All you got to do is believe in Jesus and you should be saved. Well, I'm telling you, you better believe in him. <laughs> you better know what he said and how he felt about things. Back to Mark chapter six, I mean, chapter four, can I knock y'all? So he said that if they did understand, then I would have to do what? I would have to heal them. I would have to save them because they did as Kiara was saying. Once they understood what they were doing wrong, they started doing it right. Then I would have to save them. But the other part that was here is he don't even want to do that to some folk that are not sincerely kingdom minded already. Pick up in 13, Kana. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay, so y'all have ears to hear. I want y'all to hear clearly. It says, so now, do you know not, you don't know all parables, but here it is. I'm going to explain this parable to you. The sower soweth the word. So he wasn't planting seeds. He was planting the word. That's why I started in Hosea. He was planting the word when he was teaching these people. And these are they by the wayside. Where the word is sown, it's thrown out. We're crying aloud. We're sparing out. We're proclaiming the name of Yah. We're saying, keep Pesach. Pesach is coming. Our new year is at hand. Prepare yourself. You can't have no leaven in your house. We're speaking all these words. We're trying to get ourselves ready. We're giving the word out. But when they have heard, but when they have heard, they heard. Satan cometh immediately. That's the bird. Shaitan is the birds. Shaitan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown or planted in their hearts. So these are not people that were just following along and not listening. These are not people that didn't want the word. They heard the word and the word was sown or planted already in their hearts. But Shatan came by and did what? Took the word from them. How did he come take the word from them? Now, let's get a little bit more understanding of this one. Jump back to Matthew chapter 14, I mean 13 for me. Jump to Matthew chapter 13. Verse 18, 13 and 18. He therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. So y'all have see why we go precept upon precept. This is the same parable, but it's giving us a little bit more understanding here. It says, hear the sower of the parable, once again, uh, the parable of the sower. When one heareth the word of the kingdom, what does Zakain say? We have to be kingdom what? Kingdom minded. When one hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one or shatan and catcheth away that which was planted or sown in his heart. 
This is he which received seed by the wayside. Hold that chapter two, because we're going to be going back and forth. So y'all understand what's going on here? There is people who heard the word of the kingdom. They actually received the word or portion of the word in their heart. It was planted in their heart. They're not just standing by saying, I don't want the word. They're not saying, I'm just following along and I don't want to know the most high. But before the word actually took root, before they had understanding, when they don't understand this word, and because they don't understand it, Shatan comes and plucks the word right back out of them. But it was already in their heart. The same thing when you try to come to this truth and you be excited about it, and you go back, you try to tell your family members, and then they send an experienced pastor your way. Oh, no, but it don't say you have to do this. The, the Sabbath is done away, but you don't have to keep that. You can worship every day alike. And then they'll try to make something hard for you to understand it because you don't fully understand what you heard on your first Shabbat service. You have not been in enough Torah studies to properly understand Torah because you want to understand like I did when I first came to Unleavened Bread. Okay, this keeping Sabbath thing was cool until Unleavened Bread came around. Now you telling me I can't eat bread? Uh, this is, I don't really understand. This ain't, ain't fun anymore. And I'm going to speak this somewhat in the parable because I don't want to go all the way to this thought tonight either to, at this moment. But for those who have ears to hear, hear this. I love coming to Shabbat service. I love the way they praise. I love the way they teach. They really study the word. And then you get to a scripture that talks about nida. Uh, what does my nida have to do with me serving the most high? I ain't going to make them people crazy. Oh, the word is all good. And then you hear Samak say, but uh, according to the word of the most high, husbands, you know you're not supposed to lie with your wives on Sabbath. What? Man, I used to go to the club Saturday night before I get up to go to church on Sunday morning. I'll be with my wife on Saturday night before getting up to go to church on Sunday morning. And I get up Sunday morning, I go to church and I praise God. You're going to tell me I can't be with my wife on Sabbath? I, I don't understand all that. Because you don't understand the clean and unclean laws. These are just some examples, Mr. McCoy. There's so much that is written that when a person hears something that they don't understand, they may be offended. They may not want to want the correction. Why? Because they heard something and it was planted in ground that have not yet been properly cultivated. And so the Lack of understanding allows the adversary to come take the seed back out of them before it can take root. Back to Mark 4, Kanakia 16. So again, those that are by the wayside are not those that didn't hear the word and didn't receive the word. They actually received it in their heart. But because they didn't understand a portion of it, the adversary came and took the seed that was planted right back out the ground. 16, Kanakia. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So most of the time we think people with stony ground is what? We relate that with stiff neck and rebellious a lot of times. You hear stony, oh, that's a hard hearted individual. That's a person that don't want to hear the truth because Israel is stiff neck. But according to this parable, and these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground who when they have heard the word, immediately, what do they do? They receive it with gladness. So this is opposite of sounding like somebody that's just stiff-necked and rebellious that don't want to hear the word. It actually says they actually heard the word. And they said, and immediately, they receive it with gladness. They had a joy of hearing this word. And I know many of us have seen many people come. We've seen many people go. The first few sittings, they come and they enjoy service, but over time, they don't enjoy the way we study and they go back to another way. It's not saying that they did not enjoy what they heard. They had gladness when they first received the word of Elohim, but because they were stony, they did not have enough earth. They did not have enough ground to take root. So again, the sower through the seed, so we're speaking this word to someone whose heart needs to be 
renewed, who needs to be foul ground, needs to be broken up. There need to be enough space in your heart to receive the Torah. Yah loves Israel. You are Israelite. Oh, man, what? All these years, I'm his chosen people. I, I received that. I'm glad about that. Oh, yeah, Samak Tazawa, you can't ride your motorcycle no more on Sabbath because that's your own pleasure. What? <laughs> I don't know about all that now. Uh, I like the fact that I'm an Israelite, but uh, I want to ride my motorcycle because Saturday is the day when everybody rides to South Carolina and go to Myrtle Beach and go see all the women. Uh, thou shall not fornicate. Thou shall not look upon a woman to lust after her. You start hearing all these words, and what happens? Oh, man, it sounds good. And I still know a lot of people right now, that when they see you, they're going to say, Shalom, Ak. They still ain't keeping Sabbath. <laughs> how, how, uh, how my lot doing? How my lot guy doing? How uh, uh, Zakane Hanny y'all doing? How Zakane Eliyahu doing? I ain't seen y'all in a long time. They still remember everybody. They still love everybody. They just still don't want to walk. But they still want to say, hey, I just ain't doing it, but you, you know I still know I'm Israel. They still happy to know they're Israel, but they still don't want to keep the customs. Stony ground. They received it. But because the ground was not first broken up to receive it, to take root, because it didn't take root as soon as the sun come up in the morning, what happened? They, they, they butted too fast. That, that seed was planted, it was not enough dirt to have it down in the ground for it to take root. So it sprouted too fast and it ran. Oh, I'm an Israelite. And the sun came up and did what? Burnt them, scorched them. So again, one that's stony heart is not saying they are a wicked individual. They're just an individual whose heart has not been prepared to receive the word of Elohim yet. 17, can I? And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. After when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So let me redo this picture. I'm an Israelite. I'm not keeping the Sabbath. It's cool. I enjoy the feast days. Hallelujah. But now your job is saying they're going to switch your shift. Now you lose your car. A little turbulence happens in your marriage. Or maybe sickness touches your body just for a small season. Whenever tribulation faces you or stands in your face, that mountain comes in your faith, in your face, because they lack even now all the faith in Yah, they're easily moved because they were not rooted. They weren't radical. Abadal, Adon Abadal did a great teaching on radical one time. A lot of times when you hear about somebody being radical, you're thinking they're over-religious and they just take it too far. Radical means to be rooted. People should be calling us radical because we rooted. Oh, y'all radical, y'all. No, I'm not coming to your party because it's Sabbath. Hey, y'all do y'all. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying I can't come because it's Sabbath. I'm not judging what y'all do. I just can't partake. Oh, you radical. Y'all radical and y'all believe Y'all don't never do nothing. Oh, I do. I, hey, I will gladly party with my Mishpachah on Shabbat because Shabbat is a party to me. <laughs> Can't nobody party like a Yah party because the Yah party don't stop. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all see when we get into the feast days, when it was ticking down for Sukkot, when that sadness kicked in, why the sadness kick in? The party was about to have to go different ways, but the party don't stop. We come back together for Shabbat. But that's what happens. People run because they're not rooted. Read on, Kanab. I... 
and these are they which are sown among thorns. Such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So that these are the ones that are planted upon thorns. So let me give a visual of thorns again. So anybody that has been planting a garden, and I share with y'all about my Esha when she first started her gardening thing here in North Carolina. Man, she was out there and the neighbor had to come like, what are you doing? Like, I mean, bless her heart as the old people say, oh, bless her heart. My Esha was like, we're going to have a garden. We're going to have some food during this pandemic. We gonna, I'm going to plant this food. But she was out there and a whole bunch of grass and weeds and tweeds. And the neighbor was like, what you doing? Like, you need to get your, you need to get some my uncle. Like, y'all got an uncle that has a tractor over there. And normally the way we used to do, he'd come up with that tractor and till this whole field. You'll be there forever. Trying to do that, my Isha was out with her little whole thing, trying to break that ground up with all them weeds and tweeds. We called my uncle and he came and it made it much easier on my Isha. And when he came with that tractor, he tilled that whole thing in less than an hour. Till that ground, it was nice and soft and the seeds can go down there real good into the ground. She can plant it down deep. She can move it back with her hands and plant the seeds because that tiller got everything out of there. But every day you would seem like my Isha would go out there and what was happening? Little stuff was still, grass would start to grow back. You got to go out there and make sure you're continually plucking the grass and stuff from your harvest. If not, it will return. So you break it up, but you got to go out there and make sure you're still keeping that grass from rerooting and coming in and choking out the life of your vegetables. With that being said, it said those that are planted amongst the thorns and thistles are those who let the cares of the world, riches, and stuff hinder them from receiving the word of Yah. Meaning, I want to study and I want to serve the most high. I want to do my Torah portion, but man, it's NCAA week. I like my basketball games. I got to watch the games and man, the game is going to be on at the time when I study Torah. I'm going to study Torah after the game go off and after the game go off, you're too tired to study Torah. So you don't study Torah. Man, I want this new house. I want that five bedroom. How many children you got, Aki? Three. You got three children and you got a four bedroom. Cain. Three children and you have a four bedroom. Cain. So you and your wife got a room? Cain. All your children got a room? Cain. So in order for you to get that new house, to have that fifth bedroom that you don't necessarily need, but the house that the Most High has already blessed you with, you now have to go do what? Work all this extra overtime. Now you're working on Shabbat to try to get this other stuff. And so you like, it don't matter. I'm doing good. I provide for my family. Your family was already provided for. And if it was anything like my family was when it started before the Most High allowed my father to build the house, we shared rooms. And sharing rooms sometimes bring a closeness to siblings and brothers and sisters. Yisrael wasn't always looking for the big house. As I came, Yaakov like said last night, our riches is the Torah of Yah. But to sum this up, the cares of the world and stuff and life and everything that's going on around us sometimes keeps us from being prepared to serve our father because we're too caught up in other things. Remember when I said last night, fight for your salvation, fight to give y'all your best. Cause as we read last night in the Torah portion, y'all wants our best. We got to give y'all our first. Don't give him our last. Don't give him our worst. Let's give him our best. We got to fight to give y'all our best. And the cares of the world a lot of times will try to keep you or keep us from giving y'all our very best. So at this point, I want to ask a question. What ground are you? And don't give the answer you think people want to hear. I asked you to look at yourself last night. 
Do a deep self-evaluation. What ground are you? And if any of us really do a real good self-evaluation sometimes, you should feel a tear actually come to the back of your eye sometimes. Because you're like, wow, until rereading this, I thought I was good ground. So I asked my children last night, what type ground are you? And they told me what type ground they felt they were. And then I asked a question, which I'm not asking you. Well, what's hindering you from getting from that state to the state where you want to be? What's hindering you? That's what I want to ask you now, Mr. McCoy. What's hindering you if you are a certain ground that's not good ground? And generally, you're going to find the cares of the world or some type of tribulation is keeping most of us from giving y'all our best. So I ask my children, what type of ground do you feel I am? And they said, good ground, daddy. And I said, told I. But I see a little bit of all the grounds within myself. Shame to say. But I want to re-evaluate this because I don't see the wayside, hallelujah, because wayside meaning the word is planted and it's taken back out of you. Praise Yah, the word is not taken out of me, nor can it be taken out of me as long as Yah continues to protect me and put a guard over my mind. But the cares of the world and tribulation sometimes hinders me from being the best version of myself to Yah that I want to be. Stuff gets in the way. That's the reason why we have to understand the sower and these parables. We got to continually pick those weeds and tweeds out of our hearts that's getting in the way of our relationship with our creator. When this 11th season is at hand, we should be re-purging. We covered fringes. The reason why we wear our fringe, our fringe is supposed to keep us in remembrance of you messed up, Sama. You messed up, Akoti. You messed up, Emi Azakane. No names. The fringes keep us in mind. Man, I got to do better. I almost broke a commandment. I didn't break the commandment. I almost did. I almost let anger get the best of me. But when my, my hand rubbed against my fringe, Whoa, it says be angry and sin not. I remember that now. But I should not even gotten that angry anyway. Ms. Bakai, while we in this season of preparing for unleavened bread, examine yourself. Do not think that we have already arrived. We still got to continually work on our ground. A garden does not just grow of its own when you first plant the seed. When Adam and Eve had the first garden that was planted, he told them to do what? Now you keep the garden. You replenish the garden. You still got work to do, Mish Makai. The most high started this thing off with a garden. And until we understand how a garden is planted, rooted, tilled, maintained, cultivated, will we understand ourselves our father started the beginning of the word off in a parable for us that when his ruach finally comes to us and hovers over us he opens our understanding to understand that a garden has to be kept if you take from that garden you have to replenish what you've taken out so that you can have another harvest all of his moedim or his feast days are during agriculture season. It's all about a harvest, sowing and reaping. From the first to the last feast day, it's all about sowing and reaping. And if we're not planted in righteousness, what type of harvest are we going to have? So Pesach is beginning of the bringing of our offerings to the Most High. And if you want to offer the best of yourself to the Most High, 
You have to examine yourself to find out what's in your way. And why haven't I gotten over that yet? Or what must I do? The first thing it is to acknowledge it. And then you got to break it up so that Yah can fill you with his Ruach. So I'm going to ask a question again. Out of these grounds, which ground are you? Let's jump to Matthew chapter 13, can I, Kyle? And I'm not going to be before y'all much longer. Matthew chapter 13. And 24. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sold good seed in his field. But while the man slept, his enemy came and sold tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not you sow? Good seed in your field. From whence then has it tares? He said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servants said unto him, Will you then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together into the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles and to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, so again, the most high is sowing for us. <laughs> He's sowing and talking about a sower again. Now he's referencing about the kingdom of Shemaim. Here's another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. And I'm going to tell y'all, if you do a little research in Eastern cultures and even here, there are people that want to compete. If somebody has a better harvest than them, then they might lose clientele. So therefore, I might want to sabotage your, your harvest so that I have the good harvest. You can have a bad harvest. So it's saying that a sower sowed good seed, which meant he planted a good word, Mr. Kyle. And again, I'm not one to try to have a controlling type doctrine, but I will try to give you words of the, the most I have. You don't need to eat from every table. Be careful of some of these videos that you may watch because as some is trying to sow good seed, there's others out there planting something else that can upset your stomach or upset your ruach. And then you're wondering why you're rebelling or rejecting the word of Elohim. It says, he sowed good seed, but while he slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now his servants, they seen and they seen these tares growing also, which lets you know that there are some people, his servants that are used to planting with him, they know that all these are not wheat, that some of these are tares. But in short, once again, let me give you an explanation. Tares and wheat, when you plant them, at first, when they first start growing, they look a lot alike. You can barely identify between the difference between a tear and a wheat until they are fully grown. When they are fully grown, a lot of times you can tell the difference because the wheat is humble. It flows with the wind. A tear is more stiff, which represents pride. It stays straight up. So when the wind bro, bro, a lot of times, if a storm come through, where we'd just be sitting there blowing back and forth with the wind, tears, they snap in half because they refuse to humble themselves and to blow with the ruach of the, the breath or the wind, right? So these men or these servants were able to identify that some bad seed has now been planted. And you know how those with ears to hear and eyes to see can tell the difference between wheat and tares? You can see when you bring forth the word somebody when their face change and their countenance change and they're upset with you. But that's because there might be some bad seed there. 
But he told them, leave them alone. Do what? Let it all grow together. Why? Because anybody knows anything about planting, if someone has come and you planted your, uh, your wheat and somebody put a tear right by your wheat, if you go up and you try to uproot the, te the tear, what might happen to the wheat? You might pull the wheat's root out of the ground also. So don't do that. Let them all grow together. And when the harvest time is complete, we know which ones is wheat and tears. Gather them all up, pull them all out of the ground, and you're going to then do what? Separate them. Let's go to the separation process. Jump to uh, verse 36, Kanakia. Then Yahshua sent the multitude away and went into, a, into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth this good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The, but the, kingdom tares, the, kingdom, the children of the kingdom. Come on, read on. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy, the enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burnt in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There should be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who have ears to hear, let them hear. All right, there we go again. Now he that have ears to hear, let them hear. So in closing, Mr. Bakai, let us hear this. He says, he uh, was now explaining the parable of the sower of the tares and the wheat. It says, he that sowed the good seed is the son of man. So he that's putting forth this good word, this good characteristic, this good behavior, that's walking in the character of Yah, that's walking in the image of Yah. The field is the world. So everybody that's in the world, you either receiving of the good seed or the bad seed, but this stuff is going out. And so we know that the prince of darkness is actually trying to do what? Plant as much seed of wickedness as he possibly can. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy sold them is the devil and the harvest is the end of the world. And at the end of the world, when this harvest takes place, we're going to gather them all. I want you to separate the wheat from the tares. And what we're going to do to those tares, we're going to burn them. But you bring those wheat into my barn, into my house, into my storehouse. Now let's go back to Mitzrayim. Stay in your house. Get your lamb on the 10th day without spot or blemish. On the 14th day, you kill it between the evenings. You put the blood on the doorpost. Your firstborn will be spared. Y'all need to be in the house. Those that are without, <laughs> all the firstborn was going to be what? Killed to destroy. Mishpachah, it says, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. I have a two-part question now. What seed are you? And whose seed are you? What seed are you? And whose seed are you? And for all the questions that we've asked today in the lesson from Zakan Yaquab to now, are we rescuable? Why or why not? Am I good ground? Why or why not? What is hindering me 
from giving y'all my best? Am I good seed or am I bad seed? Am I a child of the most high Yah or am I a tear of Shatan? Mishpachai, this is where I'm going to close at. I hope it's been understood that we need to be examining ourselves while going through this Persian process with these questions in mind. Am I rescuable? Am I one that Yah will tell me things? As he told Abraham, who kept his commandments and said, I know that he will raise his house aright. He will dedicate his children to me. He's going to teach my laws in his house. Therefore, I'm going to let him know what I'm going to do. As Mashiach said in the brick Kadashah, he that have ears to hear, hear what the Ruach or the Spirit has said. Will we be delivered because we've made the proper changes because we understand the call of the parables that's being spoken? In the end times, will we understand the sound of the shofar that's being blown? Do we understand the signs that's in the arrests in the earth today with what's going on around us? Do we have the spirit of fear and why? Because unto us is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of Shemayim. So my last question is, are you kingdom minded? And the second part that that is, as us to the others, why or why not? I hope this word has been well edified. I hope it's been well received. Mishpaka, as we are purging ourselves in advance for the Moedim that's coming up, let us be able to offer ourselves before the Most High without leaven. Seven days shall we eat unleavened bread and we not present ourselves before him with leaven. So let us be examining ourselves. Let us be breaking up our ground. Let us go in and get all that stuff that's been planted at night. The stuff that we like, oh boy, when did this get planted? When did the adversary plant this into my mindset and start getting all that stuff back out of us so that we can be ready to receive of the Ruach of the Most High Yah at the beginning of our new year. With that, Mishmaka, I give all praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High Yah. Hope it's been well edified and well received. And I'm going to yield at this time all praises, all honor, and all esteem. Before we do any praise, if anybody has any praise on their hearts in reference to the message, I'm going to ask um, uh, our, our uh, at this time, I'm going to ask the three elder Imams, which is Elder uh, Ima uh, Audrey, Ima Newkirk, Ima Shoshana. And I'm going to open it to uh, uh, the Zakanim after that, but I want to ask the uh, Adona, Imas, or uh, Emo. Uh, so I'm starting with Ima Audrey. Are there any words that you have before we go forward? First of all, I have to say, ouch. Toe, 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 two minute warning and toe, toe, toe message. I just love a message that forces me to do a self examination, you know? Oftentimes we just wanna hear a good word, something that make us feel good, what have you. But a lot of times we need something that's gonna make us examine ourselves. And I know we wanna think the best of ourselves and think that we are good soul and, and, and good seed. But all I can say is I still have some weeding I need to do. Praise y'all for the word. Praise y'all, praise y'all, hallelujah. Thank you for your words, Iman. Thank you for your words, hallelujah. Iman Newkirk. Praise y'all. Shabbat Shalom. Praise y'all. I just want to say a toad, toad, toad lesson. And I just want to say that uh, from the two minute warning up to now, and just like you said, it's a reminder. I know back in the day, I I, I, I sought y'all for everything, even to the t things that I put on, everything was coming first for him. And somehow or another, I had got slow back. And I'm asking him, because I was in bed last night after that word, it brought tears to my eyes. Oh, because he always was first in my life. I didn't let nothing come before him, even my husband, my children, friends, or family. Always, everything I did, I asked him about, even when I went out to shop, where to go at the shop, and everything. I, he was always first in my life. And I just thank and praise y'all for how you bringing this word forth. And we, uh, I want to be good soul. And that's why I always used to tell myself, when people see me, I want them to see y'all. And so I have I even had an incident when I was, uh, when I first come in this walk and I always, I, I always wear my fringes when I go out. And this is true about the fringes because 
it's been, I, I guess it's been about five or six years ago, I was in Walmart and something that happened between me and uh, one of the uh, 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 employees there. And I was getting ready to go off and I happened to look down and I saw my fringes and I said, no, I cannot act like this. And so uh, that's why I continue to wear my fringes because it's always a reminder who I am. And I know I belong to him. I was bought with a price. It's not, it's not about me and I'm going to serve him. And I thank you for how you're bringing this word out. And I even though it reminded me when my, I only have one child. And when I had that one child, I had dedicated her back to the most high. Back in then I said, God, and I, and I just thank you for how you're bringing this out. So it's not, uh, I like you, how you say that radical. I now understand it's not radical. This is what I should be doing. Praise y'all, praise y'all. Tov, 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 blessing. I yield. Oh, praise, honor, me to the Most High. Barak is quite our name. Total for your words as well, Ima. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, Ima Shoshana, I just seen you go off air. You were next. <laughs> no, I'm here. I, um, I'm trying to get get back here. There we go. I touched something and it went out <laughs> when I was picking up my phone. Uh, tov, tov, tov word and two minute warning, they were in sync together. It is the time that we need these words that are being taught now. It's the season because of where we at right now. We need to remember and know who we are. We need to know that we are who we are and be confirmed within ourselves through the word and our actions and our deeds line up with the Torah and with the Ruach HaKodesh. We need to examine ourselves daily. And this word reminds us to do that. And I'm thankful for how the Ruach has been leading both of you as to giving us what we need, the food we need, the nourishment we need, the uh, motivation that we need also. Hallelujah for the Torah. Hallelujah for your teachings. Hallelujah for the leading of the Ruach HaKodesh. Tob, Tob, lesson. Tob, two minute warning. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise, honor, esteem be to the most high, Yah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And thank you for your words as well, Ima. Hallelujah. And before I open it to the Zakanin, I will say that I do believe, you know, uh, just when someone looks at us, they should feel that we're good ground because I do believe the majority of us are good ground. Uh, but it said if some had 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. And when we read further on, it said to those that uh, the half more was given. And to those that wasn't doing anything, it was taken away. So if we've reached our 30-fold mark, we need to always be increasing and just make sure we continue to keep the weeds out of our ground. So um, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, we just need to always continually do better. Praise y'all, praise y'all. Thank you, Imams, for your words. So at this time, I'm going to open the floor to uh, the Zakanin. Uh, Zakane, uh, uh Yaquab, Hanayah, and Eliyahu. At this time, if y'all have any words, Zakane, Yaquab, or yours? Uh, uh, out you. Out you. Okay, you're gonna yield, Hanayah. Okay, Zakane, Hanayah, you can go first. He yield to you. Don't hang out. We can't hear you anymore. If you speak, he said, uh, "You go and go." Did he get dropped off? Oh, oh no, I'm here. I'm here. I was. I heard. The, I heard the ox start talking. I didn't know if you could hear me. I think the mic was off. Shabbat shalom to each one of my family members. Ima, you know I love you. Uh, Tob lesson. The two minute warning is set the tone. But the Tob lesson is is that we need to understand so much about the ground. You know, so if we understand about that ground, that we are that ground and that it's necessary to, like, if I'm planting, you use the terms, if we're planting something, we need to understand that the ground just doesn't stay the same. If you don't tend to it, if you don't till it, if you don't water it, if you don't take the weeds out of it, the, the ground will become hard and stagnated. So. I just think the lesson was totally told, especially when we, it really was clear that we need to till our own ground 
and to make sure it's properly adequate for the word to grow in it. So I thought it was a total blessing and I really appreciate it, uh, getting it this morning. I love you. I love you too, Adon. Told out for your words, told out for your words of wisdom. Told out, told out, Adon. Hallelujah. Uh, I already know what Yaquab uh, is going to say. Is I can uh, Eliyahu, you go first. Shabbat Shalom, Mr. Pekash. I love it seeing the relay that takes place each of these Shabbats. The two minute warning and then that which follows up. It's like a relay, uh, beautifully executed. I find that in today's lesson, as with most often uh, can be said, there's always room for improvement. And like the sister stated, there are moments that having those seats are a visible reminder of what is supposed to be within. When pressed upon by the attitude of the world and that which goes on around us, my rib will often say to me, make sure you have your seat seats on before leaving. <laughs> uh, not that I have to be reminded, but it's kind of a, a running uh, joke with us or commentary because I work uh, two platforms driving, Lyft and Uber. And throughout that day, I encounter many, many situations which if the old man weren't staked, it could be a, uh, let's just say an evening news event. Uh, but that said, I am grateful that I'm not the man that I was uh, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, or even 50 years ago. And so a work in progress that's being perfected daily. I thank you, gentlemen, for setting the tone, the admonition given to continue to uh, break up that fallow ground. Because when the word and the watering of the Ruach comes about, we should bring forth a good harvest, because good seed indeed has been planted. I yield. Hallelujah. All praise, honor, esteem to the Most High God. Thank you for your words of wisdom that you shared, Zakane. Total for your kind words that you shared on the behalf of me and Zakane Yaquab as well. Toda ya, toda ya. Hallelujah. All right, Zakane Yaquab, the floor is yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Toda more. And uh, toda uh, Ima Zakane that. Uh, gave us the words of encouragement, you know, um, um, that, that, that keeps us motivated, you know, along with the, with the Ruach HaKodash, but told out for those words of encouragement. Um, I, I, I got a couple of things and I'm going to echo the emo, uh, ouch, <laughs> ouch, ouch. Um, a lot of, most of these, um, uh, um, Shabbat service lessons, Moray is an ouch moment for me just personally. Um, you know, I still consider myself uh, a babe crawling, crawling in this in this truth. You know, um, so the way today you brought that, uh, um, I'm trying to phrase my thought. Um, the oh man, I, I'm drawing a blank on the thought here about the uh, um, while the men slept. You know, after they planted the good seed. And then uh, the men slept. As they slept, you know, uh, the enemy was able to creep in and and sow in bad seed along with with the new seed. And that hit me pretty pretty deeply, you know. Um, uh, 
uh, well, I'll just stop right there. But that hit me pretty deeply while 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 the men slept. The enemy was able to creep in. Um, the the second thing was um, um, experiencing what it feels like to to really garden, to plant seed, and then and then nurture. Well, you know, um, to bring that seed up to the point where it's producing fruit. And I think that 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 the Most High uh, and Yahweh Shai use those agricultural because that's the kind of people we were when we when we connect back into our culture and our heritage. You know, uh, I'm trying to say if you have not, even if you can just grab like a five gallon bucket and amend that soil, make that soil ready to receive some seed and plant some seed, a lot of these parables that we read in the Bible starts to come to life, you know, um, about three, well, about four years ago now, um, I, I wanted to plant uh, some grapes. I, I planted two different uh, grape vines, and I'm telling you, going out there and, and, and preparing that soil, and then like Maury said, making sure you kick the rocks out. Because every time you go out there, there's weeds growing up where you thought you laid down enough fabric to keep the weed from coming through. You mulched it and all of that stuff. And 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 it just, it's not enough. You know, while you were in the house sleeping, those those weeds and those grass started to grow up in what you thought you had protected. So um, Toda, Toda Maury, the way you brought that lesson out. And I would encourage everybody, if you have not tried to plant a seed just grab you like a five gallon or a three gallon bucket and then see what it takes to produce fruit. Halal yah, halal yah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Told off for that, as I came, told off for the two minute warning. Uh, and we say get a five gallon bucket and just try it, huh? <laughs> so, 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 I told off for that, told off for that. All right, Mishpachah, we give all praise, honor, esteem to the Most High. At this time, before we close out, if anyone has any praise on their heart, any words, we're not going to open the floor. Uh, we're going to open the floor because we still want to make sure we're able to give uh, praise to the Most High. Uh, so the floor is open. If anyone had any praise on their heart at this time, any words on your heart, you know, we're going to open the floor for a few moments before we close out uh, with the uh, mitzvot and, uh, and tefillah. Yes, sir. Don Michael, the floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I just didn't want to pass up a chance to give y'all some praise. Being new, um, I am just so thankful to um, just be learning. And um, I think when you had me to look at my ground, I kind of got teary eyed. I was like, my God, help me. <laughs> I, need, I need some real help here. But I thank you that I'm in a place where I truly believe I can get the help that he has for me. And um, I'm just still pushing through. I know, I know that y'all is, is good. And I, and I, I'm in the right place. So I just give all the praise to y'all. Um, I just thank yeah, for all of those that are in their respective places, the Imams, the elders, um, and I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I told for you share the dome. And the <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, I seen Bat Zion. Um, did you still want to floor a Koti or did you put your hand on purpose? Are they still, is she still on? Um, did she get kicked Shabbat off? Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. You my rose? Okay, Shalom, Shalom. The floor is yours. I thank, I thank y'all for today. Um, good word, good warning. Um, it really showed me some errors in my life, and I never heard it explained those parables like they were today. And so it was such a blessing and gave me some understanding better about the planting and the grounds. And I think, I think y'all this week, I had a birthday, you know, and I just think 
Yah for that, <laughs> you know, where he brought me from. And I thank Yah for the place that I'm at now. I thank Yah for the uh, you who speak it in, our, in my life, you know, is such so powerful to hear it come from out of a man's mouth, a man of God mouth, the word of God that is so powerful that helps make you really look at yourself, at myself, and I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All first, first of all, all praise, honesty be to the most high Yah. May he forever be esteemed. Uh, Toda Yah for uh, your, your many years of life and may he continue to bless you abundantly. So praise Yah for your date of birth and that he's blessed you to see that day. Hallelujah. And also, uh, Ima, thank you for your kind words and may Yah continue to uh, speak through us that we may impart his word into his children. And we are so thankful that Yah has you join a part of this Mishpachah. Hallelujah. Uh, and while I'm looking at the floor, uh, Emmanuel, we're happy to have you here with us also. Uh, so Emmanuel is definitely we happy to have you here. May the Most High continue to bless you. Uh, may you continue to tune in, and we pray that uh, the words that come forth will be uh, beneficial to you, and you will profit from them dearly. Um, we thank you for tuning in with us. Hallelujah! All right, all right. Uh, Ak Richie, the floor is yours. Shabbat shalom, Mora and family. Shabbat shalom. Uh, very great lesson. Uh, it makes me. Uh, evaluate myself well we have to do it every day to make sure that we're walking on the right path and uh, having our brethren around is a great thing too because sometimes we cannot real sometimes we might not even realize what we're doing is wrong period we might just be doing what's right in our own eyes and uh, with Pesach approaching uh, I think of those passages where it says present your bodies as a living sacrifice and uh there may be times where we might fall short uh, but it says in the, the scriptures uh, a righteous man falls and gets back up we got to acknowledge if we mess up what we did wrong to the creator ask for forgiveness and do our best not to do the same same thing again and so uh, with, with it being Shabbat and everything, I'm just grateful to our father that, uh, I got another day. We have another day to correct our ways and, uh, be thankful. I close. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, uh, Toda, Toda, uh, Adon for your words and, uh, praise Yah for you being on with us and may he continue to increase in your life. And, and as you stated, uh, we all have to work on this continually. And if we, if we do something, we got to correct it. And it's, that's the reason why the most I says, Gather yourselves together because we can encourage one another to uh, and, uh, to that love of Yah and to the obedience of Yah. So, Toda Aki for tuning in. Uh, may the Most High continue to bless you. All right. I see uh, Sarya Hanan. You want me to yield, Sarya Hanan? Let Bot Francis go before you or? Can, can. Okay. All right. Uh, Bot Francis, the floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. I just want to uh, first give all uh, honor, glory, esteem to the Most High. And I um, want to acknowledge my Isha for being the best Isha she can. I just want to take this time to, like I said, uh, glorify the Most High. Um, after listening to uh, the lesson and the two minute, you know, it, like I said, everybody did a, a reflection uh, about what about what ground they are, you know, what ground they feel they are. And uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I think like uh, we all, we're not perfect. So we all are not good soil, you know? So we all have a little bit of rocks and whatnot in there that we still gotta work to take out. And I, I mean, I just look back and just, you know, thank the most high, even, even when I didn't know him, he was still protecting me from, you know, growing up, joining the military, deploying in war zones multiple times. You know, I didn't really look at it as, you know, he was protecting me, I look at it as I was doing it myself because I was prepared, I mean, I was gun ho I was battle ready. 
you know, and I thought that it was all me doing it by myself. And then, you know, come to realize, you know, a lot of my friends didn't make it out, but I made it out. You know, that wasn't, you know, that was, that was Yah's will. And now I realize that, you know, he controls everything. So, you know, even though I think I'm big and strong and all that good stuff, you know, I can't do by myself. And I never will do by myself, you know, now that I know the most high and what he could do. So that's all I have. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Total for your transparency and, you know, your experiences in war, being battle ready, battle tested, trained as a soldier. It's all for the purpose of Yah, because he's using you greatly, Adon, and I feel like he's going to use you even more and more abundantly as time, as you grow more and more in him. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Sorry, Yohanan, the floor is yours. Shabbat shalom, Mr. Kyle, Shabbat shalom. When I say all, get all steam told, praises to the Most High Yah. This is a told uh, Shabbat lesson from your more told two men and one for the Zakane. Um, I just wanted to uh, share some good news for the Mr. Pekat. You know, this is how the Most High worked. Um, last Friday, I had an interview with the VA up in Durham, North Carolina. Monday, I get a call and say, hey, you hired. You gave me an offer, so hallelujah. Probably the next couple of months, I'll be moving to North Carolina. They get me close to the North Carolina family and the Virginia family. They're two hours apart, so hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that, you know. Um, I'm ready for this move. I get all the steam and praise the most high because it's all his doing, you know. The most high makes a way. Um, it might not be right away, but the most high make a way. So always keep faith in the most high, man. You know, he's the he just awesome, you know. Like we sang that song, awesome, he awesome, yeah. He's an awesome, great, and mighty yah. Hallelujah. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I just want to jump on that testimony with my eye, you know what I'm saying? Because we just came through a lesson about sometime when tribulations and things come, how some people lose faith and give up. And as he said, just it may not come the way you want to come or when you think it's going to come, but stay in Yah. So he's uh, he's applied for several jobs in VA. And we was hoping it was going to get him back in VA and get him close to VA. And he was trying, trying, trying. And, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't go through. And this, this third time, and we would pray before each time. And this time he got there in North Carolina uh, and now he's coming to North Carolina. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But like I said, it puts him in between both Knessets here in North Carolina and in VA. So a couple of hours, either way he can be to either Knesset, you know? So I just praise y'all that y'all placed him, you know, in a, in a perfect location. He's in between everyone. And also for us to get some work established right there in Durham, North Carolina, because we have a representative right there in Durham, North Carolina, which has a, uh, 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 a lot of people there. So praise y'all, praise y'all. I'm so happy for my art. So happy to have him closer to us because, you know, Sarah Yohanan is the reason why so many of us join together and he makes sure everyone's in the know. So can y'all just imagine how much better it's going to be with him even closer to us? So hallelujah, man. I'm so happy for that. That is definitely a praise report and I'm so happy for him. All praise be to the most high, but he stayed steadfast each time that it was not the time he didn't get down. He just like kept it moving and kept it pushing, you know, and he stayed the same George Yohanna we know him to be. So praise y'all that he uh, he came through and he's a testimony that is living and walking before us with how y'all work. So hallelujah, hallelujah, all in y'all's time and praise y'all. All right, uh, uh, Batzion, I see your hand up. I believe you was first, no, Bez first. It was Bez first and then Bez family. And then we give it back to you, Batzion. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. We're currently outside. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna sing a, a new song that I've been I was gonna save it for Pesach, but I, I just I feel like it's it's a good song. It, it talks about cycles and how um the even even if we don't learn from our mistakes and even though we don't you know we don't um change anything that we're supposed to change the adversary will use that and keep us in cycles so um you guys can hear me right <laughs> okay okay we can't all right all right so that 
Didn't I conquer this last year? Tell me what I missed, cause I fear that it's coming back up again. Must be something I ate, some song, some show, some hate. Mm. See, the devil wants to extend the game, free throws. <clears throat> And when it ends, he wants to make the sequel. Cause if he has another chance, he feels like he can take my joy, my peace, my faith. See the devil, he learns from your mistakes, even if you don't. That's how he keeps you in cycles. Oh, cycles. That's how he keeps you in cycles. Cycles. That's how he keeps you in cycles. Cycles. This will end like I wanted to. I win. The enemy will have to lose again. See, I'm a, oh, sorry, y'all, this hits me. <laughs> See, I'm a different fighter now. And I have y'all to think, because his joy is my strength. Oh. See, the devil will learn it's a mistake when I am sure that I'm not going in cycles. I'm not going in cycles. I'm going to break these cycles. I'm going to break these cycles. I'm not going in cycles. I'm not going in cycles. So we're not going in cycles. Cycles. Oh, so yeah, help me be free from all of my passes. See, your love is enough to make me new and help me in these cycles. Help me in these cycles. Oh, yeah, help me in these cycles. I need you in these cycles. I rebuke them in the name of Yah. Oh, cycles. See, I'm not going in cycles. I refuse it in the name. I'm not going in cycles. Oh, all I'm saying is cycles. Oh, I'm not going in these cycles. See, there is power in the name of Yahweh. See, there is power in the name of Yahweh to break every cycle to break every cycle see there is power in the name of yahweh there is power in the name of yahweh to break every cycle to break all these cycles to break all these cycles, these generational cycles, these financial cycles, these painful cycles. So we're not going in cycles. We won't allow it. We're not going in cycles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That was perfect timing. Praise be to the most high. We're not going in cycles. We got to get you in the studio. We got to get you in the studio. Hallelujah. All right. Batzion, Batzion, the floor is yours, Akoti. Praise y'all. Can you hear me? Hey, can. We can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. That was a beautiful song. My heart is beat and you touched me. Praise Yah for you delivering that, that testimony, that song. That was right on time. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! I can't follow that, <laughs> but I can give my testimony. Um, I was going to sing a song, um, but I, I first wanted to say um, our Yah is amazing. He's great. He is always here. He is always here and he answers prayers. Um, and so I, I just want to give thanks for the messages that um, he's been giving um, and, 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 um, and the peace of who he is in, in this time. So there's a lot going on. I was going to um, read Tepheline 20, 20, 27, um, but I'll, I think I want to, I will sing a song. I'm going to sing Tepheline uh, 103. Um, I'll say it, it's, I'm singing one through four in Hebrew, but I'll say it in English first. <clears throat> Barak Yahuwah. O oh, my being and all that is within me, his Kodesh name, Kodesh name, Barak Yahuwah, all my being, and do not forget all his dealings, who forgives all your wickedness, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life, your high from destruction, who crowns you with kindness and compassion. Um, one moment. Okay. Bakinashi et Yahuwah. May I test? One moment. Bakinashi et Yahuwah. Y'all give me a moment. You got it. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't sing. You got mm. it. You can, you can always say it. <clears throat> you got it, Kutsi. Baki nafshi et yahuwah Beahi sheki kol kamucho Baki nafshi at Yahuwah, te amis keski koke mucho. Hasolea, I'm sorry, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was beautiful, my sister. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Hallelujah. Nothing to be sorry about. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Ima, Audrey, the floor is yours. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom again. I want to offer an offering to y'all through song, but first I wanted to comment on something that Yaqua was saying. Uh, a couple of years ago, I tried my hand at gardening and I did the, the large containers. I had like four containers and I tried to follow the instructions and do what I was supposed to do, but it's a lot of work involved. And it was suggested that I add fertilizer and it was suggested that I use cow manure or horse manure or chicken manure. And I decided, no, nah, I don't want to do that. So I didn't get a good yield and it was my own fault, you know, because if you plant a garden, there's work involved and you got to follow through. So I was discouraged and I didn't do anything last year, but this year I've already uh, purchased my seeds and I'm trying it again this year. I'm not giving up. So pray for me. I'm going to try it. Um, I want to attempt to sing a portion of a song by Ron Cannoli. I will come and bow down at your feet, Yahuwah. In your presence is fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one who compares with you. I take pleasure in worshiping you. I will come and bow down at your feet, Yahuwah. In your presence is fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one who compares with you. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping. There is nothing, there is no one who compares with you. I take pleasure in worshiping you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks for sharing, Ima. Thanks for sharing that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to give Ima Newkirk the last slot before you're ready to close out with Teflon. So, Ima Newkirk, the floor is yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wasn't going to say anything, but uh, when we first came on, my camera wasn't on it's for a reason. When my camera's not on, it always is for a reason. And the reason was my blood pressure had dropped low. And I was uh, talking to my uh, husband about it, you know, because when I went to the doctor, it, it got up kind of you know, higher than what I should have it at. But, and so I was praying and stuff and I was drinking and stuff. And so uh, I was feeling bad. And, uh, and just the encouragement of the word and how you reminded me who I am in, in y'all. And those are things that I've said before. These are the things that I used to do. And in my spirit, I had gotten away from doing these things. And I thank y'all how you brought my blood pressure back up. I'm feeling good. And, and it's nobody but him because I've learned to trust in him. And sometimes we, uh, I'll just say, I don't say we, I forget who I am. And just like it was an ouch moment because y'all is so good to us. And all we got to do is lean and depend on him and trust him because my blood pressure was 88 over 48. And that's kind of low and it's making me feel bad. And so I just thank and praise y'all how it got back up. I know it's back up because I'm warm and not cold anymore. And I just thank and praise y'all for what he's doing. And, and I just thank and praise y'all for you and y'all quiet how y'all bringing the spirit back in. And that's where I used to be at in the spirit. I did things always following the spirit. And for a while I had gotten away from it. So when I come in this walk, we didn't talk so much about the spirit, but I say thank y'all 
how y'all are bringing the spirit back into it and reminding me who I am. Praise y'all. Oh, praise Allah, esteem be to the Most High Yah, told our Yah for making Ema feel better and bringing her blood pressure back to the point where it needs to be, that she feels well on your Shabbat. Thank you for your healing power and your healing presence and that we say praise to the end so she can esteem your name. Everything happens for a reason in his time. I didn't know why we switched the order of service today, but we did. So praise Yah that you're feeling better and you're able to praise him at this time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For us following the leading of his Ruach on this yom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, we're going to get ready to close out Mishpaka. I definitely enjoyed it uh, with my Mishpaka always. Thank everyone for tuning in. And uh, before we close, uh, Ima, did you have uh, anything you want to say before I turn it over to Sarya Hanan that would do the closing Tefla? Yes, I just want to make the usual announcement that um, the information regarding the Cash app will be in Telegram for anyone designed to contribute tithes and offerings or to contribute to our helping hand ministry. Toda, have an amazing week. Toda, Toda, Ima. All right, so Yohanan, if you will uh, do the closing tough line, just so you will keep the emote in your prayers for the healing and, and everything like that. So uh, Saw Yohanan, I now yield the floor to you. Um, and everyone just uh, do uh, remember that uh, Pesach or Passover is coming up. Um, and Saw Yohanan already made the announcement last night. And I know sometimes we can sound like a broken record, but we need to know who plans on staying in the cabins ASAP because it's hard to prepare for things when we don't know who's trying to do what. So if y'all could, as he's been requesting on several times, uh, at least let us know who plans on staying in the cabins or not. And if you even plan on attending, but not staying in the cabins, let us know that information ASAP. All right, total rabah. So sorry, Hanan, if you would, uh, you know, uh, send up Tefla. Total rabbi, Aki, total rabbi, total rabbi to everyone who shared today. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be Yahuwah Elohim. The Elohim our forefather, Elohim Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. The Elohim Yahshua HaMashiach, our salvation, and all your known ones that have gone before. We want to say, Toda Yah. Told our Yah, told our Yah for another Shabbat day, Abba, for another Shabbat lesson, Abba, from the Zakane and the Moray, Abba. We want to say, told our Yah for the life of your servants, Abba. Let's continue putting the lessons together, continue teaching your children, continue trying to bring your children back to you, Abba. Abba, we pray. For your healing hands, Abba. For our elders, Abba. For our imams, Abba. For our Zakanes, Abba. For your children, wherever they're going through, Abba. We asking you for your healing hands, Abba. To heal them, Abba. To lift them up, Abba. To make them whole again, Abba. We asking that from you, Abba. Oh, almighty Yah. Grant that we may come to you in, in the spirit, Abba, in love, Abba, through your spirit, through your Ruach, Abba. Gather us all, your children from the four corners of the earth, around our Elohim, the salvation of all mankind, the Abba. Keep us in your hands and under your wings because there's no savior but Yahuwah, our Elohim. Hallelujah. May our hearts become truly free because you deliver us from all bondage to our own natures and to the world around us. As free people from not this from the physical bondage, Abba, from the spiritual bondage also, Abba, breaking that yoke off our necks, Abba. May we be led safely through distress, fear, and want, through need and debt, Abba. May we become your happy, joyful 
children that you call us to be, Abba. Who you has called to life, Abba. Because we are not discouraged by the struggle, but we will continue fighting joyfully for your kingdom until it could be revealed to the world, until the world can realize that you and only you is the true Elohim of this world, Abba. Because the world is yours, Abba, which is your creation. You created everything in this world, Abba. As we are still preparing for your set apart feast, Abba, we pray that you continue guiding us on the righteous path, which pleases you. Told our Yah for everything that you do for us, Abba. Because there's no us without you, Abba. Told our Yah for the Shabbat, Abba. What you say is the sign between us and you, Abba. Told us for being this the loving and care of Elohim, the loving Father. You are to us, your children, Abba. Told us for the right rulings when we're not doing right to get us back right with you, Abba. We, your children, do not want to take you for granted, Abba. Because we see your wonders, Abba. We see your doings out here, Abba. And we see some of your judgments that you're doing out here too, Abba. Abba, we just ask you to continue protecting us from the adversary, the ones that try to attack us, Abba, the ones that try to test us, Abba, the ones that try to lead us astray from you, Abba. We just ask you for your continued protection, Abba. Told her, yeah, told her, yeah, told her, yeah. We love you, Abba. We serve you. We honor you, Almighty Yah. And we esteem your set apart name. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Blessed be you, Yahuwah our Elohim. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah our Elohim. And blessed who come in the name of Yahuwah our Elohim. And everybody on this line say hallelujah. 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 Right, hallelujah. Yeah. Mr. Picard, we're gonna say Shabbat Shalom to everyone. May you enjoy the rest of your Shabbat day. You know the day is a little bit longer, so get outside, enjoy the creation of Yah. If you have a nice, beautiful day outside, and uh we love you all, Mr. Picard. I'm gonna say Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom to the next time. Hallelujah.